Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 34 of my Regrowth Let's Play. Last time, we got started on Thomcraft. We did a bunch of scanning, and we unlocked all of the different aspects of magic. Between episodes, I did confirm that aspects seem to have a cap of about 100. Once you start going above 100, then you're going to start running into diminishing returns on the things that you scan. For example, if I were to go scan, say, a block of iron right now. Well, at the moment, I have in metallum. Come on, where'd it go? 137 points. When I scan the block of iron, I see that the iron block is worth 27. So that should bring me up to 140. 64, but you may have noticed down in the lower right, I only gained a single research point for Metallum. Diminishing returns seem to kick in on research when you go above 100. So when you get that close, you're probably going to want to stop and do some actual research. Let's get into some of that today. By the way, metal is one of the most common aspects when you have a few tech mods available that add different ores and different machines it's not a bad one to use. So, speaking of research, oh, one other thing. A silverwood tree has grown. No special surprises in it yet. Those familiar with Thumbcraft will know what I'm talking about. Those not familiar might wonder why I'm going to chop this thing down, but don't worry, that will become apparent in the future. Right now, I definitely want to turn this into logs and saplings. By the way, silverwood trees grow into the ground a little bit. So you're going to have to deal with that. Which can be a little bit dangerous, actually, if you happen to have a open pool of water underneath the way I do. Where the roots can grow. Oh, actually, hang on. How do we even get out of this thing? Oh, like this. That's a little better. So, hmm. You know what? It just went ahead and deleted all of the dirt, didn't it? I guess it can't easily get back down in there. I had to expand the pool some to make the fish happy, and so I decided, you know what, we're not just going to leave it like that, we're going to go ahead and uh, cover things up a bit, and leave only a 3x3 three three pool to jump down into in a large tank underneath. Now, the silverwood leaves do not always drop saplings. I think I might have gotten one, at least. Yes, I did. Good. Very good. And the trees themselves, as you can see, when they grow, they actually occupy a 3x3 three three area on the bottom and then poke out one more in the middle of all of that and go down into the ground to form roots. Ooh, actually, I'm getting a few saplings. That's exciting. If you want to speed along your silverwood leaf decay, I recommend punching by hand or using... A special tool that you can get out of magic bees later. There have been issues in the past with things like scythes and the horn of the wild and such not allowing saplings to drop when you destroy the leaves. I do not know if that is currently the case. I would welcome any commenters to mention below if they have luck with Tinker's Construct scythes or the Batania horn of the canopy or anything else that's available in this pack for quick leaf destruction. However, silverwood trees were also made a lot smaller, so this is less of an issue than it used to be. You could test these on greatwood trees, those various tools, as the greatwood saplings are a lot less expensive to get in this pack, and it's not as big of a deal if you end up not getting one when you chop things down. I came out with two saplings for the one tree that grew, which is actually a pretty good rate of return. I'm not unhappy about that. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna let the, we're gonna leave that thing there to grow and grow again, and hopefully it will return something good for me. We're also gonna cut down the great wood tree just this once because getting all of those great wood logs will be re really useful, and also great wood is just pretty. It's really nice looking. And you know what? I think I'll take my own advice here since I have extra great wood saplings already. Wow. These trees grow tall and branchy, so you're going to need to be a little careful cutting this down. Ouch. Uh, wow, we actually got everything. This lumber axe thing is amazing. We're going to make use of this nether axe scythe, and we're going to see if we get any saplings out of it. Bam, bam, 
Bam. None so far. And great wood saplings tend not to be nearly as rare as the silver wood saplings, so that worries me. About the likelihood of not getting any saplings using the netherrack scythe. So, oh, there we go. Okay. So whatever issues used to exist have likely been removed, but it's still worth being a little careful. I definitely don't suggest attempting to punch down a great wood tree. In fact, I don't even suggest hanging around to wait for all of the leaves to decay. There's just so many of them. Um, hmm. If we weren't so close to the other trees, I'd use the horn of the canopy, but that's just going to end up basically removing the leaves on my entire forest. So what we're going to do, this hopper hawk has not been doing much for a while. We're going to grab him. And we're going to take him. And probably just a vanilla double chest. And stick that near where the great wood came down to help pick things up. There we go. And we'll keep the logs and the extra sapling in there for now. It should be able to grab everything that's nearby. And then I believe that's the space that the great wood tree grew from, judging by a few things. Huh. Or maybe it needs mana to be able to grab that far away. That's not a problem. Let's give it some mana so that it can actually pick everything up. Where is my mana pool? Here we go. And we will grab one of the many mana tablets that I have been refilling over time. Here you go, buddy. You can have an entire half mana pool worth of mana to work with. That should let you pick up all of the things. Excellent. It also picked up the mana tablet. Sigh. This is why you want to filter your hopper hawk. To do so, you're going to need to make an item frame, which is going to require a bit of leather and some... St Actually, do I already have an item frame somewhere? No, I think I used them, didn't I? Yeah, we just have the map frame. Okay. You're going to need a bit of leather and some sticks. Really? That's all the sticks I had in there? That's weird. Oh, it filled up the stack I was already carrying. To get an item frame. And then I think you put the item frame on here. You know what? I should probably check this out in the Lexica Batania before I start trying to teach you how it works. Uh, placing item frames in any of the inventories will specify which items can or can't go in them. Okay. An inventory which has no item frame adjacent to it can accept any items, but labeled inventories will take priority. Rules can be... The rule using to sort items can be changed by shift right-clicking the flower with a wand of the forest. Okay, so let's try shift right-clicking. Pick up only items in frames is what it's currently set to. Pick up only items not in frames. Pick up any items. Ah, well, let's try the only items in frames. Give it the log in the sapling. And actually, you know what I want to do? I want this thing to not pick up the mana tablet. Oh, but giving it the mana tablet isn't going to work out all that well, is it? Mm. You know what? I'm just going to say not worry about it. It doesn't use a whole lot of mana. As you can see, it's full and the mana pool is still a good bit full. So I'm just going to get the tablet put in there a couple more times. Let it drag out some. Because it drains fairly quickly. It's probably not something that's worth worrying about. And then we can get this thing set back to any items. There we are. We'll just leave the frame and the mana tablet over here. All right, enough playing with flowers. I'm sure that's what you guys have been saying for many, many episodes of this series by now. Well, actually, I seem to mostly get positive comments on my time with Batania. You guys seem to quite enjoy that mod, which is good because I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's new and exciting to me, which is great content. All right, let's do some research. Some of the most basic stuff that you're going to need in Thaumcraft is in alchemy, the magic magical metallurgy. But actually, you know what? Never mind. That's a terrible idea. First, we're going to research better researching. Because, in general, you want to make, I like to make at least, my researching as efficient as possible. And the best way for me to do that is to research research expertise. Now, to get a note to research further, you need to have 
a scribing tools and some paper in your inventory. However, I don't want to just use any scribing tools. So I'm actually going to toss these into the mana pool, which changes this into a botanergist's inkwell. And this guy can be charged up exactly the same way as a mana tablet. As long as this is set to sparing mana two items. And this way I will never have to refill it with ink again. It'll do all of that automatically by using mana instead of ink to craft things. So let's pick that up. We are... it's actually full now. Already full. Excellent. And now we can use that to get the research expertise. A research note added to your inventory for research expertise. Knowledge is power. To actually do the research, you're going to place the research note into your research table. I'm actually going to trade these out. I'm going to make this scribing tool into a botner just inkwell as well and let that fill up while I'm doing some scribing over here. Now, the research is this little hex grid here. And we have to connect the various aspects by linking them together. There's a couple of ways to do this, but the most basic of it is that any aspect will link to an aspect that it shares. So, census, for example, if we take a look in our Thumbonomicon at the aspects of magic, we can see that census is made up of air and spiritus. So if we put air or spiritus right next to census, it will link. Now, the trick, the puzzle of it all, is to try to connect census, ordo, and cognitio with as few aspects as possible. So, let's take a look through here and do this. We'll do one the hard way. Well, cognitio also adds into spiritus, so that's a potential link. Though spiritus, if we go down here, made of victus and mortus is not super common. Hmm. So maybe we can find something else that will work for us. Cognitio works with Ignis. Is there anything for Ignis in air? Well, that would be the question, wouldn't it? Let me look through and find out. Hmm, Ignis and Precantatio get you in Furnace. Not something that we have a ton of, but it's easy to get these two aspects to make. Um, air and Ignis get you Lux. That's actually a pretty easy link between Cognitio and Census. And then to link further to Ordo... Hmm... If we put Lux here, we're not going to be able to easily link to Ordo. But... If we get Lux, say... Well, here. Let's, let's, let's try it. Let's put Lux in the center by clicking and dragging and dropping it there. And then using Ignis over here next to Cognitio. Um, except I'm blind, I'm blind, I'm blind. There we go. And air over here next to census. And as you can see, there's that little glowing line now and everything is linked together. Next step is to get something with Ordo. Well, let's take a look at what Ordo becomes. We're, gonna, we're looking for that particular mark of Ordo right now. Ordo in Humanus makes Instrumentum. Okay, that's interesting. Actually, Bestio and Cognitio get you Humanus. So we could put Humanus next to the Cognitio. And then your... Mm, we would need something to link. Never mind. That doesn't work out. This is a really fun puzzle for some people. I... Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. It's something that is relatively difficult to really grab my attention. Ah, Potentia, Ordo, and Ignis. There we go. So now if we hook another Ignis onto this right here, and then we hook a Potentia up. Right here. Research complete. Research expertise, knowledge is power. All you need to do now is read the discovery and you have completed research expertise. If I take a look in here, that unlocks the deconstruction table and the research mastery, which you can see is forbidden knowledge, mostly harmless. Also, when you complete a note, you get that same sparkly star up in the upper left-hand corner. 
That remains until you examine the category that the star is on. So, research expertise, you become more efficient at performing research. Whenever you remove an aspect that you place in a hex, there's a 25% chance you will regain the research point. That's kind of nice. And you will also be able to see the what aspects you need to combine to create an aspect you are hovering over. So, if I look at Jellum, I can now see that it is made with Ignis and Perditio, which is really a strange combination. Now, research mastery. Power is knowledge. Forbidden knowledge. This introduces us, us to the mechanic of warp. As you can see here, many believe man was not meant to meddle with magic, and nothing gives more credence to this than the existence of warp. Researching forbidden magics or crafting objects of a questionable nature tends to distort a thaumaturge's view of reality, twisting both their minds and their bodies. This effect is called warp. While some warp gained is temporary and will fade over time, there is no way to get rid of permanent warp once it is gained, and a thaumaturge who chooses to ignore the dangers in the pursuit of power often finds himself on a slippery slope. Uh, according to this, warp usually manifests as minor lapses in concentration, physical pain, or hallucination. These, these are more than merely mental, though, as the visions sometimes impart useful knowledge or seeming hallucinations prove to be frighteningly real. It's a pretty cool mechanic that a lot of... It was very controversial when it was added. It does cause periodic debuffs to hit you, which can cause changes in your vision, strange hallucinations to appear in front of you. It can alter your ability to break through blocks. In my opinion, it's a minor downside for what you get out of the forbidden knowledge, but some people find it intolerable. However, certain add-ons that are in the pack add ways to deal with warp. So what we're going to do now, we're going to grab Research Mastery. Note, because I am not afraid of the warp, we're going to get that into the research table. And as you can see, this is a much more complicated setup where we need to combine Census, Ordo, Cognitio, and Precantatio. However, this time, we're not going to puzzle it all out ourselves. There is actually a helper tool, which I am going to show you back in a moment. All right, folks, let's take a look at how to solve this research using the Thomcraft 4 Research Helper website. You can find a link to the Research Helper in the description below, and you should be seeing the website link on screen. It is a github.io site. So, here we go. Basically, to make this work, you're going to need to make sure that you're on version 4.2.2.0 and you're going to want to choose what aspect you're originating on. Let's say we go with Cognitio and what aspect you want to go to. Let's say Precantatio. If we want to set this to three steps because there's three spaces between here and here and we are going to say go all the way around the outside, we would set that to three just like that. And then all we would need to do is click Find Connection. Why? Oh, there we go. It keeps each of these open. So when you click, uh, close all results. Maybe it can't do it in a minimum of three. Let's try a minimum of one. That was weird. I have no idea why it couldn't do it in three or four or more. If I set it to three, it can't function, but if I set it to two, it works just fine. If I set it to one, it does the two-step one once again. Anyway, that's a weird little thing that I've never noticed it do before. Hasn't been a problem, but strange. Uh, also, you can tell it, hey, I have Forbidden Magic and Magic Bees installed. And then if it makes sense for it to go through the Forbidden Magic aspects or the Magic Bees aspects, it will do so. This will also allow you to... Oh, see here? It's now saying that it can go through Cognitio Ignis Infernus to Precantatio. If, say, you don't want it to use Infernus because that is a relatively rare aspect or you just don't have much of it. For example, we only have six Infernus over here. You can just click that off. And now when you look for the connection again, it will skip using that. Because it's a lot easier to get a lot more Potentia than in furnace so that's one option but you still need to kind of figure out like what's the most efficient way for example i think that kind of doing a branch from the cognitio to the census 
Let's see, where's census? In a minimum of five steps, because that is the shortest route between the two. I think that that's going to leave us in a better place than the alternative. As you can see here, this requires us to go from Cognitio to Spiritus to Mortus to Ex Animus. So that would be Spiritus, Mortus, Ex Animus to Spiritus to Census. So if we've got a good link from Precantatio to either Spiritus or Mortus, then this could be a really good thing for us. So where is our Spiritus? Oh, minimum connection here is only one, two. And it can do that easily with... Oh, but it's going to use three aspects to do that. So maybe this isn't the most efficient. It's still going to take quite a bit of playing with. This will not solve things for you. You're going to have to make some judgment calls and decide what sort of efficiency is the most important to you. Oh, here we go. See? With the Vitium aspect, which comes from Taint, which you can easily research in the research table, you can get from Precantatio to Mortus in two steps. Maybe that's worth it for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you then want to go from Ordo to Mortus in one, two steps, which you can do with Sano Invictus. So then if we end up placing the entire thing on here the way it's saying, we could do Sano right there, Victus right here, Mortus would then go here. We end up using two Mortus and two Spiritus on this though. And is that really useful? Is that really worth it? I don't know. Oh, wait a second here. Oh, right. I see. Never mind. Census is partially Spiritus. That's what the problem is. I got a little concerned for a moment. In any case, now we take some Mortus, which we should be right next to. Here we are. Right there. And right there. And then we use X Animus to connect the two. And then our Precantatio. Actually, let's see if our Precantatio connect can connect to X Animus before we go any further. Uh, most likely not, though, because that requires Motus or Death. So, L M N O P and X Animus. Uh, Vitium Perditio Mortus X Animus. Okay, so now it really, really can't. So to make that Vitium, we need Precantatio plus Perditio. As I continue to butcher all of the aspect names. Combine, get some Vitium. And some Perditio. Like so. Research Mastery granted. Now. When you learn this particular research you will activate some warp as you can hear those weird whispers however in my opinion it's totally worth it because you have even more efficient become even more efficient at performing research whenever you remove an aspect that you place there's a 50 percent chance you'll regain the point there's a 10 percent chance whenever you place an aspect it will not cost any points and you're now able to combine aspects in the research table by shift clicking on the aspect you wish to create. So, if, for example, you have run yourself entirely out of Vitium, it only requires you to hold shift and left click to create another one. Which is awesome. It's a very useful ability and will help you in the long run with your research. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot more research on camera. I just wanted to show you guys how it all worked. I am going to now spend some time off camera getting a whole bunch of research completed. And we are going to be looking into Golemancy as our first and most important thing. And I believe that we might actually need to do a good bit of artifice to unlock some of the options in Golemancy. I don't honestly 100% remember. So, once I get through a flurry of research, I shall return.
One last quick thing before I go on a rampage of researching. There is one more research mechanic that I have forgotten to share with you until now. And you can see some of it here in Artifice. If I take a look at the Enchanted Fabric research, this has a different icon. And instead of being a circle, it is a hexagon. And when I mouse over it, it shows me a cost in aspects of... I think 8 Panis and 3 Precantatio? I don't know, I have trouble seeing the very tiny little number in the lower right hand corner. So if I click here, I will purchase the research for that price. Bam. I know now, I now know Enchanted Fabric. Research complete. That's it, I'm done. And that also allows me to make the Thaumaturges robes items. Now, this only applies to the researches that have this little hexagon icon, like the Goggles of Revealing, gives me a research note, the Paving Stone of Travel and Warding, those auto-complete. So, when I'm approaching Gollomancy, my first research is not in fact the Hungry Chest, that was an auto-complete, my first research is going to be Straw Golems, which I'm going to have to finish in the research table. I just wanted to share that, ooh, what do we got here? Why are those, I have no idea why those have little star symbols underneath them. That is strange. That doesn't make sense at all to me. Uh, oh, they all have that. It's just hard to see in the, all of the ones up until now. That's a new effect that I don't remember being there last time I did this. Anyway, so I'm going to get into doing a whole bunch of research and when I am done with that, I will cut back in and we can get started making some golems. Alrighty folks, I got quite a bit of initial research done. As you can see, we've researched a couple of things in thaumaturgy, quite a bit in alchemy, well, four or five things in alchemy. Not much of anything in artifice, but most importantly, we got the initial bits of golemancy done. Now we can finally get started crafting some goodies, and to do that, we're going to need to get some magical potential into this wand, known as V. And if you take a look at the Thaumonomicon, you can see aura and nodes over here. Magic is everywhere. The aura is a field of magical energy prevalent throughout the world. Basically, you need to find aura nodes, which are going to be easiest to find through your thaumometer. These aura nodes usually contain some form of primal aspect, and then you will be able to tap that primal aspect with your wand. And the easiest way to do that is, in, in this pack, in my opinion, you've got two options. One, you can go out there and you can put your thermometer out and you can look around and hope you find an aura node on the world. And it's especially easier with this sash. However, as you can see, they're not super easy to pick out. Oh, there's one. You can see them through objects using this, which is useful. Aura nodes can be scanned, and then you will know how many aspects are in them. This one has 57 per DTO. And then you will be able to drain from the node using your wand. An iron-capped wooden wand, however, is actually kind of terrible, both at draining. Ooh, we got 25 of the per DTO at it, out of it and at not damaging the node. If you fully drain an aspect from an aura node, it could lose points of that aspect. It could become a pale node. Ooh, look at this. Perditio and Aqua. Only 20 Aqua though, so let's be a little careful with this actually. Ah, oh, it's so hard to see without the proper gear. We'll get that in a bit. So we're gonna be very careful not to drain it too fast. We don't want to drain it dry, but I do want to get a good bit. Six, four. We'll leave it at that. Um, a pale node recharges a, a lot slower, and if you drain all of the aspects out of an aura, no aura node, damage them until they no longer exist, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because that node's just going to flat out disappear, or it might hang around as a pale fading node. Fading is the worst kind of thing you can do to a node, and can oh, whoops. Eh, yeah, that's what happens when you have your nose stuck in something. Good thing I've got that necklace, huh? Uh, fading is the worst thing that can happen to your node because then it's just going to slowly disappear and lose all of its aspects over time without you. 
Now, it can be easier to chase down... Ooh, look at that. Witches. Except they're wither witches. Ah. You know what? We're gonna kill those wither witches while I explain. Um, the fading node will slowly lose all of its aspects, even if you don't drain from it. So, if a fading node pops up, it's on a time limit. Ooh, withering dust. That stuff sounds neat. I bet that's useful for something. Now, the other thing... Ow. Well, that's annoying. It's gonna knock me out of the air every time I, uh, take damage. It's fine. We'll just go through the wall then. Now, the other option that you have for aura nodes, if you don't feel like trying to find them out in the world, which can be challenging. Hello, chunk loading error. Oh, there you go. That's better. Uh, you can jump into the nether, actually. They're a little bit easier to find in the nether than they tend to have ignis or grow silverwood. This is why I wanted to cut down that last silverwood tree. There were no aura nodes in it. And, one other thing you might notice, the grass over here is a bit of a different color. That's because when a silverwood tree grows with aura nodes, it turns whatever biome it's in into a magical forest. The other great thing about a magical forest is, is this will spawn hobgoblins. In case you need them. You want to be careful you don't cut the log that the node itself is in. You just want to cut up the side so that you can access that node. And let's give these a scan. They can be used just exactly like any other aura node. But, as you can see, they are pure nodes, and they're also kind of tiny. So you want to be very, very careful with them. Can I get that last node up there? Yes, I can. There we are. Ooh, and this one has a compound aspect in it. The great thing about the compound aspects is, with the right research, you can drain those as well and get the get them broken down into primal aspects as you drain them with your wand. So we're going to give both of these just a couple of taps with the wand. Drain a little bit out of them. I'd like to get a bit of Ordo. There's one. But you can never be sure which one it's going to drain. So you got to be careful you don't damage the node. Especially when there's so little in them. Oh, and you see I drained all of the points out of that Ordo. I'm lucky I did not damage the node. All right. Hopefully, with the 1 Terra 5 Ordo, we will have enough to actually make something a bit better. I don't think we're quite there, though. What I want to do is I want to make a better wand. That's one of the very first quests in the quest book. And the first better wand you can make uses a great wood wand core, which requires a couple of great wood logs and three per DTO. To do this sort of crafting, you need to grab the great wood logs and you need to get the iron capped wooden wand into the wand socket on your arcane work table and put the iron logs in there. It will use 3.3 per DTO because this is a terrible wand that has a 110% average V cost increase. That means you're going to be spending 10% more on anything that you craft. And the other thing that I want to make for these is I need better than iron caps. Iron caps are fine and all, but we can do a lot better with some gold. This will allow us to make the gold-capped Great Wood Wand. But these require Air, Ignis, and Ordo. And I don't have nearly enough of any of those to be able to craft them. So we're going to dive into the Nether, and we're going to look around our portal here and hope that we can find a couple more nodes in easy reach. Now, the big problem with Aura nodes, especially... Ooh, there's one right over there. Especially on a server... Scan this portal. Yay! Is there is a serious issue with terrain generation which can cause you a lot of problems if you are not careful it can seriously slow down your server look at this there's a or pure aura node there with a bunch of ordo ignis terra and victus that's actually a really good find pretty happy about that we're going to do our best not to damage this thing because i want to take it home later later on we will unlock the ability to move aura nodes Right now, we can only drain them. And you want to go slow. And as you're noticing, I can't actually use that Victus yet, but we're going to be able to later. Alright, I think... Is that what I need? That is... Ignis 7. I need Ignis at least 6.6. .6. Okay, yeah, we're good there. And now I just need to find an Aura Node with some air in it. 
Finding the nodes is the difficult part. I think that was the node that I saw when I spawned in. Alright, so I'm going to do some exploring around. I'm going to find myself the nodes that I need. There we go. Once I have done that, I will be back. Alright folks, when all else fails and you simply can't find the nodes that you need, one other option is to kill enemies. As you can see, they are dropping aspect orbs. These are the orbs that you've not been able to pick up all game because they are not experience orbs. And sometimes those aspect orbs will be the aspect- Ooh, hello. There's a wisp there. We should scan that wisp. There we go. Now we should kill it. You really don't want to engage wisps without ranged weaponry if you can avoid it. Got him. Ah, if he dropped anything, it fell into the lava. That's okay. Oh, what have we here? Never mind. It didn't fall into the lava. I simply was out of inventory space for it. Ethereal essence. Any wisp that spawns will drop ethereal essence. They always have a bit of orum and a bit of some other aspect on them. Ooh, and I got some wool of bat. That's really awesome. Just random luck there. Uh, let's see, we are at 10 air and we are all filled up. When I came into that fight, I was down to... I, I, I had only managed 2 air. Ooh, oh. Crud, I am being attacked. And actually, I accidentally damaged that aura node. It is now pale. Just from regular draining of it with my iron wand. It did not drain any of the aspects to zero. Careful use of Rod of the Skies will allow you to almost fly. But that landing is gonna hurt. Unless you drain it all the way and then fall. Alright, let's go get that wand created. So, put you in here. And we grab our two gold caps. And then the gold caps plus the great wood rod gives us the chance to make the great wood, or the gold capped great wood wand. But we need a little bit more air V because I forgot about that bit. Darn. Alright, so yeah, I think I'm going to clean out my inventory and we're going to go back in. And actually, I'm going to finish that craft in between episodes. When I come back next time, I'll be handing in the gold-capped Greatwood Wand quest, and we will continue on the path to Golems. Remember, today is the day for the dragon fight. We will be live streaming it at 2 p.m., and the episode with the dragon fight will go up quite a bit later after that because there's some more preparations I want to make between now and then. So, see you later today, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you have enjoyed this episode. If so, please leave a thumbs up. Tell me what you liked. If not, please leave a thumbs down. Tell me what I can do better. Either way, you'll interact, guaranteeing I show up in your subscriber feed, and I'll see you next time.